concealed underneath this beautiful Bentwood cover is an incredible machine, uh, a Singer 99K13, born back in 1930. Uh, if you follow us at all, you know that we just recently sold one of these. Our customer down in Texas could not be any more happy, loves the machine, loves the transaction. Make sure you check out that feedback on a machine that's identical to this one. This one is even, in my opinion, prettier than that other machine, as gorgeous as that was. Let me take this cover off and show you what I mean. Isn't that a gorgeous machine? Again, we're really particular about our selection process, the machines that we choose to uh, purchase privately, uh, and even more particular about servicing those machines. So the winners always are, I think, even more pleased when they actually see the machines in person. And this one speaks for itself. It's just a gorgeous machine. I'm going to go ahead and flip the light on to light up that bed a little bit uh, better. And also I'm going to show you again, for those of you that aren't quite as familiar uh, with this type of machine, I'm going to just slide it a little bit towards me. Uh, what makes this machine very unique, and you'll have to make sure that you also check out our listing photos as well, because we have an original ad in there, an ad that actually promoted this machine when it first was released uh, back in the uh, early 1920s. And it does an excellent job of illustrating just the incredible benefit of a knee control like this versus a conventional foot control. But as I said when we sold the last one just a few weeks ago, if the winner uh, would prefer to have uh, a foot control with this machine, uh, we're glad to do it and we'll do it for free if the machine sells for at least $400 or higher. If it sells for less than that, then we would charge a nominal fee of $50 to include uh, that uh, extra enhancement to uh, operating the machine. But again, this uh, knee control is so easy to use, and you'll see me uh, uh, you see the results of that, I should say, when we do the sew-offs. But you simply slide it in the front of here. I know it'll be a little bit of a challenge for the camera to get it, but you slide it right in the front like so, and then just rotate it uh, down. And with that, it's all set to use. Um, it's not a complicated process, and I think it makes it a lot easier to operate the machine, too. Okay, let's go ahead and start on the bottom right-hand side of this machine, uh, right by this gorgeous crest. Uh, winding a bobbin is very simple with this machine. Uh, we're going to come uh, off the top, right where you see this spool of thread right now for the main feed, come around this thread guide, across the front and under here, and then right up to uh, the bobbin winder. And to engage it, you're simply going to push the wheel down. It'll make contact with the hand wheel. And then when that uh, bobbin is full, it will naturally begin to push against this and then disengage. All right, right above this crest uh, is the very unique thumb screw approach to adjusting stitch length. Uh, the more you turn it in, the longer those stitches are going to get, the more you turn it counterclockwise to the left, the shorter those stitches are going to get. And it's very easy to fine tune it, uh, even in the process of sewing, if you want to get different uh, stitch outputs. And the stitch length variation on this machine is anything from 6 stitches per inch all the way down to 30 stitches per inch. Let me show you an example of an applique that was sewn. Uh, that really does an excellent job of illustrating that wide range of stitch length for this 99K13. You can see as we come on the left side of the applique, we're pretty close to that 20 to 30 stitches per inch. And as we move to the framing on the outside, we're a lot closer to that, oh, probably around 7 stitches per inch or so. So not even, not even at full size as far as the stitch length, but pretty doggone close. The final result, though, is just a beautiful representation of what a straight stitch machine of this quality and caliber can generate. And again, because of the quality of this machine, you are just as capable of generating a very cool project like this uh, when you get this machine in your own home. As with all of our machines, we try to include 
uh, an instruction manual. An instruction manual for two purposes. Number one, it's going to give you the, um, the simple little pointers and the simple little cues on how to maximize this machine. If you encounter a, a, a question, it will guide you very quickly to that answer. It's also going to help you maintain this machine as well. Now when you get it, don't even worry about that. We spent about 12 hours on this machine uh, to make sure that it's absolutely as close to factory standard as possible. Tuning it, conditioning it, cleaning it, oiling it, inside and out, so it's ready to go to work. But as that routine maintenance comes due, this manual will guide you through the very simple steps of maintaining this amazing machine at the optimal sewing level that you'll get it in. Now let's go back to the machine. We've already covered uh, the bobbin winding, we've uh, covered stitch length. Uh, as we come up over the top of the machine, uh, you'll see that we've got our spool of thread up here. And as I've said in numerous other videos, even though when this machine was born back in 1930, they really didn't conceive of dual needle sewing as we know it now, with needle technology, with over-under needles, oversized eyes of needles, it is possible to even take a straight stitch machine with the existing needle plate and do uh, dual needle sewing uh, with the, the needle technology as it is. Okay, now moving away from this spool of thread, you're going to see that threading this machine is very, very easy. As we come away, we're coming across the top of the machine. We come through this single thread guide. We're going to drop down through the tension control area. We kind of come around the tension spring and then underneath this uh, little uh, L-shaped guide for the thread. Not through the hole, but underneath it. Up to the arm, and then we come across the faceplate. I'm going to go ahead and remove uh, uh, this just for a second so I can rotate the machine more easily and show you that threading across the faceplate as well. Okay, hopefully that's enough for the camera to get a shot. By the way, you'll notice as well, without me even pointing it out, what a gorgeous ornamental type faceplate on this as well. If, you're, if you were to take this machine to a quilting class or a sewing class, it's going to be a total disruption, which is great, because you're going to be the center of attention with this amazing machine. And uh, But you can see here how the thread comes up to the arm, it goes across the faceplate, and then it's going to come down through one more thread guide just above the needle area, and then you're going to be threading this from left to right through the needle. I'll also mention the needle is going to have the flat side to the right uh, as well. So uh, little pointers that are also in the instruction manual, obviously, but I thought I'd point them out in the video just so you can have that as a point of reference to go back to, as many of our buyers will do. Also notice as well, you've got a lot of clearance underneath that uh, presser foot. Lots of clearance to fit uh, extra quilt matting, uh, heavy grade materials as you'll see in some of the sew-offs. Whatever it is you're sewing, it's a breeze with all that clearance underneath the presser foot. Also another great convenience on this 99 is uh, that drop and bobbin. Whether you're concerned about uh, the thread running low or whether you're simply looking to change out the thread color amid a project, it's such a breeze to pop in a bobbin real quick and to resume your project after that. So let me rotate this machine back forward again. Now as the camera kind of takes a quick pan around this gorgeous, gorgeous machine, um, I'll simply say to you that um, I think that the machine in and of itself, the Bentwood cover, all the other goodies that we're including is more than enough incentive to bid on this outstanding machine. Just like the last uh, 99K13 that we offered, uh, a huge number of bidders uh, and just a huge number of bids. It really is a very rare uh, machine. And as of this morning when I uh, checked on eBay, it is the only one currently listed. So uh, don't let it slip through uh, your fingers. But if this isn't enough, as you could probably see in the photos, we're going to be including some other fun things. Uh, this very cuddly teddy bear. And also a very neat book. And I know the I'm kind of pressing the camera a little bit here. But also a very neat book on making your own teddy bear. So just as this bear was made, you can also design your own bear, and there's a huge number of original patterns in this book as well. So you can really become a teddy bear 
uh, artist and a teddy bear expert using this wonderful 99K13. Also, as kind of a vintage uh, plus, and you'll see it in the photos as well, we're going to be including this Singer hem stitcher. Uh, just a really neat attachment. I mean, you talk about rugged. Uh, you can see the construction of this uh, very cool attachment. And whether you use it on this Singer or another Singer, it's just a wonderful vintage piece uh, of uh, Singer technology uh, in uh, giving you more adaptability uh, with your sewing. So those are just the bonuses that we're throwing in along with obviously a machine that has been serviced to a degree that no other machines on eBay that I've seen can match. So make sure you check out our other videos as well where we go into the heavy duty side of this petite powerhouse with that 0.6 amp motor.